welcome to another mums and murder video so we are heading into valentine's Ooh, i hope everybody has everything sorted me i've been married for 10 years and um with them for nearly 20 so valentine's is just another day in this household but um yeah i hope everybody has a lovely day tomorrow and you all spread the love and I hope everybody's having a lovely little time off. Any mummies ready for pulling their hair out yet? Um, unfortunately, I'm still working away. Or maybe that's fortunately. So I'm not so worried. <laughs> not having to pull my hair out just yet. Although <laughs> it might get a little tricky soon. <clears throat> anyway. Hi. Uh, welcome. So, um, yeah. This is another video and I hope you enjoy it. This was a horrific one to try and get through. It's um, teenagers and you know we all had those or we're all near the point of those. Um, if you're not lucky you <laughs> enjoy enjoy this little years while you can. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I have two teenagers. They're fine. Um, unfortunately these teenagers they had some mental health issues and it just goes to show how important it is for you to keep an eye on your teen's mental health um, and even though they're a little bit older try and keep track of who they're talking to what they're doing it just it just goes to indicate all those sorts of things really um so yeah let's just get stuck right in i'm sure you've heard of this case anyway it's an american case which is unsurprising because most of the cases i bring are um this one is about michelle carter <clears throat> Sorry, just adjusting my sis. And um, Conrad, Conrad Roy III. Um, I'm sure that you have heard of it. It was a big case. I remember hearing bits and pieces of it way back when um, it happened in 2014. Her trial took place in 2017. And I think like she's out now. So, uh, well, let's just, let's. We'll just get stuck in sit back relax enjoy um hopefully you get some time and peace during this break to enjoy a little video and i hope you enjoy this one so here we go so yes conrad roy the third he was born in september 1995 and he was 18 when he died which is very sad um his parents were lynn and conrad the second and his grandfather was conrad the first um, they owned a tugboat company, which Conrad um, enjoyed going out and helping out on so much so that he actually got his um, captain's license for sailing. Um, so he absolutely loved being out there and helping out with everybody. Um, great kid all round by all respects. He was an honour roll student. He graduated as an honour roll student. He was heading off to college. Um, he was into his sports and all 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 that went with it um unfortunately for conrad when his parents got divorced he took it very very hard <clears throat> and um he ended up with anxiety and depression which is awful and a horrible thing to even try and live with never mind all your teenage years and all that drama that goes with them as well um so yeah that's that's conrad he had two younger sisters as well who absolutely adored their older brother um they would have said he was the funniest most kindest person um that they could have ever known he they just loved him they just adored him absolutely just adored him but onwards um, we shall go. So like I say, Conrad, he suffered from depression. But it seemed as though he was getting a handle on it. He had started making like YouTube videos in a way to try and vent some of his feelings. Um, frustrations. Or, uh, I caught a glimpse of one. Um, just where he was saying, you know, he had to learn how to grind the gears and, and, and wake him, shake himself and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, it did seem like he was really trying to start making progress. Unfortunately, I think in 2012, he did try to commit suicide, but he managed to ring a friend and that friend basically managed to get him help and saved his life. So, you know, although the thoughts were there, I think the reality of actually doing it 
wasn't there. I hope if you understand what I mean. Um, he just, he was just so depressed. It's just so sad. You know, he was 18, he had everything going for him. He was 16 at that point, but he was 18 when he died. And, you know, it's just so sad. Anyway, so on a uh, family vacation, I think they went to visit relatives, he met a girl called Michelle Carter. And um, Michelle, she had her own issues. Michelle had different mental health issues than him, but mental health issues nonetheless. She um, had an eating disorder. Um, some would say that she had she had depression. She was rather needy. Um, she was also into her sports, into her softball, I think it was, into her sports. Um, by all rounds, she again was an honour student, into her sports. Um, wasn't greatly popular, didn't really have a friend as such. Had lots of friends that she would text, but not very many that she would meet up with or go out or anything like that. Um, which is also quite sad, you know, everybody needs a friend that they can at least go out and have some fun with at some stage. But yeah, they also, they lived about 35 minutes apart or 35 miles apart, <laughs> not entirely sure, sorry. Um, but they lived, I suppose, rather close to each other, but they never really, when they finished their um, holiday, they never really hung out or um, met up. Maybe a couple of times, but nothing great. Um, nothing to get significant about. But they did text a lot. And that, unfortunately for Michelle, would be her downfall. Now, at the beginning, um, everything was just seemed normal and hunky-dory. And any time he ever talked or brought up suicide, she'd be like, No, you know, we love you. Don't do it. We want you here. And, and seemed really um to discourage him from doing that type of deed <clears throat> um however that encouragement or discouragement soon turned to encouragement and she would not only text him ways in which he could do it she would almost be like hounding him like are you gonna do it today are you gonna do it today are you gonna do it today you know mm. Something not quite right about that. Nothing, nothing right about that at all. So he, on the day, so on the 12th of July, 2014, yeah, he went for a walk with his mom along the beach and his sisters and he had a really great day, really lovely day, really enjoyed his day. We talked about going to college, his future, all sorts. His mum said he kept nipping back to the car to check his text messages, um, which, you know, she's 18, she didn't really think anything of it. Um, they got home and he said goodbye and head night. He told her he was going to a friend's house. Um, this is actually the same friends that saved him the first time around. He told him that he was going to a friend's house and she asked if he'd be back for dinner and he said um, he didn't know or he was unsure. So that, unfortunately, was the last time that Lynn saw her son alive and um, just horrific. As the night went on, she was getting a little bit worried about him. You know, 10 o'clock, are you coming home? Um, it got to about 4 o'clock in the morning, I like guess very late, are you coming home? She got up the next day and he just he wasn't there. He wasn't in his bed. Um, However, at 10.30, um, when she had asked his sister, did he, she hear from him or anything like that, she was like, no, haven't heard from him, but I got this funny text message from a girl asking, did I know where my brother was? Um, I've been trying, she'd been trying to reach him and couldn't. And the mum's like, right, okay, well, don't be telling where he's at, because his friend's friend was a girl, and she was like, don't be telling him he's at this friend's house in case you, you know, you start trouble, you don't want to, you know, she's just a friend, but you just never know, type of thing. And, um, yeah, big regrets right there for the mum. Not that she should, but, you know, I think she wishes she had questioned that text message more, or sought out who it was. Now, it was Michelle Carter. It was Michelle Carter who had messaged his sister. I'm not sure how she got the number or anything like that. Um, do you know your brother's at 
by 10.30, Conrad had already died. So she already knew that he was dead and then messaged his sister. Ugh. Twisted is not even the word for it. Not even the word for it. So like I said, as the night went on, got four o'clock in the morning, he still wasn't home. She's like, look, it's late, are you coming home? The next morning she got up, he wasn't there, his bed hadn't been slept in. So she phoned the police and um, the police went searching for him and at 6 p.m. the following evening on the 14th they find Conrad dead in his vehicle, in his truck, in his Ford truck. He had um, poisoned himself with carbon monoxide. He set up a whole um, generator in the back of his car and had poisoned himself with carbon monoxide. So sad. Oh. Saddest thing ever. 18 years of age. But it gets worse. Because, in my opinion, after reading all of this, I genuinely don't think that Conrad actually wanted to go through with killing himself. And this is how we have ended up here and talking about this. So, although Michelle Carter never physically put her hands on Conrad Roy, she was still classed as the cause of his death and here's why so remember i said to you about all those text messages that he was receiving well basically they were all from michelle and she was saying things like are you going to do it today are you going to do it now you know i'll stay with you if you want to do it over the phone just really trying to encourage him to kill himself so Text messages from Michelle Con Michelle Carter to Conrad Roy. So, are you sure you don't want it tonight? Um, really don't know. Michelle, like, are you deaf not doing it tonight, Conrad? I don't know. I'll let you know, Michelle. Because I'll stay up with you if you want to do it tonight, Conrad Roy. Another day won't hurt, Michelle Carter. You can't keep pushing it off though that's all you keep doing those were the types of messages that she was sending to Conrad Conrad who suffered from depression was already tried to attempt suicide was already contemplating suicide and this girl who's supposed to be his girlfriend who's supposed to love him is messaging him telling him to go ahead and do it but the text messages that she sent him, they were not the reason that she got um, charged. She actually got charged for involuntary manslaughter and that's not the reason why. And we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll, patience. Patience. We'll get there. So, Conrad, unfortunately, he did do it. Got into the car, poisoned himself and died. Um... His funeral was held on the 18th of July and his family and friends have all said it was one of the biggest funerals that they've ever, ever seen. He was just so loved by so many people, um, so kind-hearted, just so nice to everybody. Just a real shame that he didn't realise how much he was loved before that fateful night. Because he was, he was very, very loved. Michelle Carter, on the other hand, she was loved. She was loved by her family. And in some respects, Conrad Roy also loved Michelle. I think they find kind themselves to be like kindred spirits. I remember reading one text message where he had said to her, let's be like Romeo and Juliet. And she was like, oh, I'll be your Juliet. And he was like, do you know how that ended? And she was like, no, I'm not killing myself. But was very happy enough to push him on into killing himself. No. Definitely not. So a few months went by and a few weeks went by and Michelle, she decided that she was going to organise a softball tournament charity event in honour of memory of Conrad. I think it was for like suicide prevention, something along those lines. And she held it in her own hometown. Not his hometown, her hometown. So all of his family and friends had to travel down to take part in this. And now, bearing in mind, nobody had even knew who Michelle was. Even 
uh, his best friend Tom had no idea really who Michelle was before this all took place. He was unsure of who she was when police came asking questions um, because they had obviously got Conrad's phone and all that. And the weirdest thing of all is Conrad had deleted all other streams of text messages and messages except hers. It's like he knew that this wasn't really right but just couldn't stop himself. So anyway, she organised this charity event for memory of Conrad and um, people were a bit unsure. They said that she was so off through the day. Well, not off as such. She just was smiling and happy and making sure she was taking pictures with everybody, making sure she was getting the recognition. She even messaged Conrad's friend Tom and when he questioned her about why it was happening where she lived and not up where Conrad's family and friends actually were um, at making sure that he wasn't taking the credit for it. It just all seems so attention seeking. Um, I'll also let you in on another little snippet that was sort of three in there. There was a lot of Leah Michelle stuff put in on Michelle's phone um, and at that time Glee was a big thing and that is around the same time that um, your man Monteith, I can't remember his first name, sorry, Corey, Corey Monteith, um, passed away and he passed away in Glee as well, his character Finn passed away as well and um, people were saying mm, it's a bit coincidental that she's very obsessed with this and this is what happened here. So they're saying, you know, attention seeking a little bit, a lot, attention seeking a lot. She messaged her friends. Oh, she messaged this girl from um, a summer camp that she went to. Um, then she went with her to, to camp. Um, when questioned on the stand, the girl was like, no, it's really random that she messaged me that night. We don't normally talk. Um, I don't hang out with her outside of the camp activities. And we very rarely text each other. But she messaged me and she was messaging this girl being like, oh, my boyfriend has issues. And things like that. And just trying to sort of create a bit of an alibi I think for herself so it, it just gets so strange so she messaged that girl with those and she messaged then um another friend well a friend an in school friend a friend that she has in school but they didn't really hang out um she didn't really hang out with anyone she it's, it's very complicated sorry so she messaged messaged her and she was like you know I could have stopped him. It's my fault he's dead. I told him to get, he got out of the van and I told him to get back in that van. And that is how she was charged with involuntary manslaughter. Because Conrad had actually at one stage stepped out of his van, phoned her. I didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it and she told him to get back in the van and she would stay on the phone with him until it was done. And that's what she did. So basically she could hear him dying on the other end of the phone. Never phoned anybody. Never lifted the phone afterwards to tell anybody. She was there. She knew it had happened. And she still just was like, la la la, my boyfriend's dead. She did it. If it hadn't been for her, Conrad would have stayed out of that van truck whatever it was he did not want to go through with it and she pushed him into it and then messaged people about it like what that's crazy the defense just had god love them such a horrific time trying to defend her i actually felt sorry for the, for her lawyers at one stage because just all this evidence kept coming kept coming kept coming kept coming the prosecution were just a they were on the ball. It was so interesting to watch. The defence brought in the a doctor. They complete the prosecution completely obliterated him. He was trying to say that she had diminished um 
responsibility simply because she was on a type of antidepressant, antipsychotic drug and that it affected the temporal lobe in teenagers so therefore she did not know right from wrong and it's not that she didn't know right from wrong, it's that she didn't think she was actually doing anything wrong and he put more of a spin on, you know, she's a helpful person, she just thought she was being helpful. Well, what about the aftermath? Where's the regret? Where's the sorry? Where's the guilt? There was none. There was no guilt. She didn't feel one bit guilty at all. She just let him get in that van and kill himself. It's just it's horrific. And afterwards, you know, she messaged his mum and Oh, he's, you know, I, I loved him and she, you know, and then she tried, she made up lies and told people that the mum had told her that, it, you know, she was one of the best things that had ever happened. Um, During the clear out of his room, his mum had found some notes written to herself, her father and I think his sisters. There was also a note written to Michelle. Michelle had actually asked him to write her, make sure that you leave me a suicide note. Seriously, what on earth is wrong with this little girl? So she got so much attention from being the grieving girlfriend and she ate it up like nobody's business. Well, that all ended because in Massachusetts, the police, they have to investigate deaths like suicide. Um, it's, it's law, sort of unnatural deaths, I think it is. Um, and thankfully, they did and it wasn't just ruled as suicide and left at that because with his history you could see how he could have just been left ruled as suicide and she would still be walking about trying to push somebody else into doing it Um, the girls who went to school with her and got up on the stand you know one of them said you know if I didn't message her back right away she would message and message and message until I messaged her back she, she had other issues. She was needy. She wanted a friend. She needed something that she didn't have. And this, I think, was her way of trying to get it. My heart broke for his sisters and his mother and his father. Um, It all just, my heart just broke for them all. You know, he was such a loving son, such a loving grandson, such a lovely brother you know his sisters miss him and it just goes to show in the way that they talk about him now how good he was with them even though he was a good bit older he was a good bit older than them he was 18 and I think the next one down was like 13 so it just it's heartbreaking it's a truly sad horrific and heartbreaking case um I'm going to try and put up some of those text messages as well that she had sent. I find some. So I'm going to put them into the video as well. So keep a wee eye out for those. Michelle, eventually, she got um, charged with involuntary manslaughter. She was sentenced for 15 months, which is nothing compared to the fact that Conrad will never live again. And she got out four months early for good behaviour in 2021. And by August 2022, she was off probation. So, you know, she's now out there living her life. I don't know whether there's regrets or she feels sorry or anything like that. And I know I've been very one-sided on this case. And they are teenagers and they do make mistakes. But this was a pretty big mistake to make when you take somebody's life. That's not just a mistake. And it's not a modern day Romeo and Juliet. That was for pure attention because she didn't have any. And she didn't know how to get it because she had issues. And like I said at the start of this video, that's why even when they're 17, we should still know who they are, what they're doing, who they're talking to. Because you don't know who's on the other end of that phone to them. I'm not saying that your child's doing it. I'm saying you don't know who's on the other end of the phone to your child and what they're saying to them. And you just sort of think, oh, they hit 18 and they're going to just flourish with the rest of their life. And you just hope and look forward to that for them. And Conrad Boy will never 
ever get to do that. And it's because he met Michelle Carter, which is quite sad because if they had never met, they didn't run in the same circles, they lived in different towns. If they hadn't had that chance meeting on vacation, then he might still be here today. Although, if she hadn't told him to get back into the van or truck and kill himself, then he could possibly also still be here today. If she'd have found him the right help, if she'd have phoned someone, but while he was dying or while he was dead, she was busy messaging his sister and messaging his messaging her friends. Like he was by half ten, he was already dead. Um, twenty past six, he left the house, and they were saying that they were putting his time of death at about eight o'clock. So he was he was already dead. Like, how do you stay on the phone with someone while you listen to them taking their last breaths and don't do anything to stop it, to even report it afterwards, then to sickly messages, do you know where your brother is? Like, that's twisted. That's twisted. And she was only 17 at that point. So good luck to whoever is in contact with her. I don't know if... In 15, well, 10 months you can, 11 months, sorry, that you can have a good rehabilitation since all the treatment she had done before didn't seem to work. Maybe it was medication. Maybe if she's off it, maybe them thoughts are different now. Maybe she learned a lesson. We just will never know. We'll just never, ever know. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a bit of a longer one. Um, it's because of all those text messages. Um, but there's lots of text messages. I'm going to put them up um, and let you go through them all yourselves at your own leisure and then you won't have to listen to me rabbit on about it anymore. But I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope everybody has a wonderful Valentine's Day and um, yeah, be safe, be good and I will see you soon. Bye.